tell your story. Change the conversation. Organized by students. TEDx Youth at SHC. What's up, y'all? I'm Akila. I'm 17, and I'm from a low old neighborhood in San Francisco called Excelsior. Hi. My name is Akila. I'm 17 years old, and I was born and raised in a small neighborhood in San Francisco called the Excelsior. Which one would you hire? Except in your school? I am a black girl with race-neutral diction, meaning if you cannot see me, you may not be able to identify my race from my speech. This is because at a young age, I learned what it meant to code switch. I remember in the fifth grade, my mom enrolled me in a summer camp that was at a different school than the one I was going to. It was predominantly black, so everyone there pretty much looked like me. And I remember it was one day I was on the schoolyard, waiting in line to play four square, minding my own business. When a girl who looked like me, same hair, same skin tone, she came up to me, she looked me up and down, she tugged on my curl and she said, even with all that curly hair, I'd still be blacker than you. <laughs> and as an 11 year old, I didn't really register what that meant, but I spent the whole summer with these kids and they immersed me in black culture. So naturally, I learned to speak the same way that they did at home. As I entered my first year in high school, I soon realized that that new way I was so used to speaking was no longer acceptable in front of a predominantly white culture. While I may not sound black, speaking to you up here, there are so many black people with some degree of an accent that is recognizable as African American. In our modern society, we perceive this as poor diction or slang, but it is simply a distinct way of pronouncing words called African American Vernacular English, or AAVE. Psychology Today describes AAVE as a combination of standard English grammar with phonological features. For example, we oftentimes drop the final consonant in words like past or hand, or as you'd say, I am not going there, we'd say, I ain't gonna be there. In 2012, a video of former President Barack Obama entering the U.S. men's basketball team locker room went viral. In the clip, viewers could see a distinct difference in the way he shook the hand of the white assistant coach and dabbed up the black NBA player Kevin Durant. This is a clear example of a behavioral adjustment that has become normal and natural for so many black people. It's called code switching. When we think of code, we think of computer coding, okay, language. When we add the word switching, the definition becomes alternating between two or more languages or dialects. That is the dictionary definition of code switching, but it has always been so much more than that for so many Black people. It's the way you dress, speak, and present yourself in front of different people. It's changing yourself to adapt to and mirror the audience you're facing to make sure you'll be perceived as acceptable. Code switching is something that white culture demands of black people. The acceptable way of speaking, looking, and acting with, say, a family or friend may not be acceptable to a predominantly white culture or a professional world. The story unfolds itself in so many different ways. In the white Western standard of appearance, straight hair and suits are acceptable. And in terms of language and communication, we are taught to never show emotion and sound American but it runs even deeper than career success. When black people can be killed for simply being who they are, code switching becomes a way of self-protection. You may not be able to change the color of your skin, but you sure can change the way you speak in front of certain people. A study by the Pew Research Center states that nearly half of black college graduates say they feel the need to change how they talk when they are around people of different races. In a society where whiteness is considered normal, this black accent is judged as undesirable or inappropriate, but there should be nothing wrong with it. When we have to constantly mold and harden ourselves to fit in, where do we get to call home? Where do we truly get to be our most authentic selves? It's more than just a language change. Making a call without your white voice switched on could mean the loss of a job, house, and so many other opportunities. As a means of survival, Black people learn to ins instinctively code switch, unconsciously slipping in and out of one culture to another. Those who cannot effectively code switch may be judged or unfairly mocked by both whites and Black people. She thinks she white. 
She tries too hard to be ghetto. She thinks she's black. Code switching impacts mental health. Oftentimes when you're code switching, you're monitoring every word that comes out of your mouth, so you aren't fully present in the moment. Over time, it can become very traumatic for a person and can affect their ability to perform both in school and in other aspects of their life. So how can we create a professional environment and world where people can truly be themselves? While code switching affects a vast majority of Black Americans, this is not just a Black reality. In the same research report, nearly one in four Hispanic adults say they also feel the need to change how they speak in front of certain ethnic groups. And for someone a part of the LGBTQ community, they may hide their sexuality around heterosexual people to avoid making them feel uncomfortable. When an environment is truly inclusive, there should be no need to code switch. We should be able to communicate in different ways with different people, bridging the gap across cultures. So I leave you with a question that we should all ask ourselves constantly. How are you living inclusively? Am I aiding in creating an environment where all individuals feel they can express themselves in which they feel most comfortable? Or do they feel that they need to hide some part of their identity when they are around me? The first step to creating an inclusive world is to understand the difference between diversity and inclusivity. It's one thing to include individuals of different races and genders in your group, but it's a whole nother thing to truly ensure that people feel comfortable and safe in the environments that they are in. Diversity may look good in your company photo, but welcoming them to be their most authentic selves is what is truly going to help. This might include avoiding assumptions of one's identity, challenging outdated stereotypes, or simply listening more and talking carefully. Imagine a world where inclusivity was not a luxury, but rather a human right. Let's start by examining our interactions and preconceptions today to create a better future for tomorrow. Thank you.